Welcome everyone and uh, good afternoon to our webcast uh, to today's topic about data and cloud for smart cities. My name is Dominic Friedel. I am business development manager at NTT Global Data Centers and I have, to, uh, I have the pleasure to be your host and moderator today. Together with our partners Inno2Grid, Dresden Sommer and NTT Limited, um, yeah, we would like to provide you some valuable insights about this topic from different angles and uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in the next 60 minutes. And to start right away, uh, let me give you a very brief overview of what we do at NTT. So NTT is a Japanese telecommunications company and known as one of the leading ICT service providers worldwide. And our portfolio spreads from ICT infrastructure such as submarine cables, co-location data centers, connectivity uh, and cloud, for example, over to services like consulting, technical and managed services, as well as support uh, up to different expertises, like, for example, intelligent business, intelligent workplace, intelligent infrastructure, as well as intelligent cybersecurity. So all these services are basically intelligent by design. And as I am part of the Global Data Centers Division, I would like to give you a slightly deeper insight in that. So uh, when we say uh, Global Data Centers, we mean um, over 160 data centers in 20 different countries. We provide the space, the power, the cooling, and the connectivity and the security for IT systems and uh, we also provide the direct access to, for example, hyperscalers, big cloud providers, all the major uh, yeah, interconnectivity exchanges. And uh, together with our technology experience lab, we give our customers the opportunity to test and valid validate different kinds of innovations and uh, IT scenarios. And therefore we have a big partner ecosystem of over 140 partners who provide uh, around about 80 different use cases. So yeah, to start right away in the topic of smart cities, uh, I brought one uh, quite interesting number. So by 2050, around 68% of the world's population will live in urban areas. And that's quite impressive in my opinion, but we also have to prepare. So we have to prepare the, the, the cities and the urban regions uh, to be ready for that kind of population and therefore cities have to improve. They have to improve their public safety, their environmental health, their economic efficiency and also we want to include um, the social population as well. And therefore there are a lot of technological and digital use cases that can be imp uh, implemented and applied um, in cities to get smart cities. And there's, for example, intelligent traffic management to monitor the traffic and to, to route the traffic very intelligent. Then also the same for smart waste management um, to get to know um, where to really drive the, the, the waste uh, uh, yeah, vehicles. Also smart street lightning, for example, to know um, which, uh, which parts of the city are really populated and where to, um, to put the lights on, basically. Uh, also environmental monitoring uh, to know where is wind, where is weather and how can we react um, with different um, infrastructure um, yeah, things within the city. Also, for example, predictive crime detection to make the city basically much more uh, healthy and more uh, secure and also a connected society to provide different platforms so that, that the uh, society can get in contact with each other. And so the conclusion is basically a massive data growth in smart cities. We want to connect all the citizens, all the devices, all the cars, all the platforms, cameras and so on uh, to really get one platform and to know um, more about what is happening in the city and uh, yeah, to, to reach the goals that I talked about in the beginning. And so what we see is the massive data growth, for example, 1.5 gigabytes per person per, per day, or also four terabytes per self-driving car, 
three terabytes per smart hospital or also three petabytes per connected factory per day. So this is a lot of data that has to be stored and also analyzed somewhere. And therefore, um, that's basically our part. So we provide the co-location data centers where customers and cities um, yeah, can, can take the space and build up their IT um, equipment to do things like, for example, data storage, analytics and AI, hybrid cloud to really connect directly into the public cloud, as well as uh, yeah, using different other technologies and platforms uh, to use this data. And so we see the data center as a foundation for smart city. And uh, therefore there are different, different requirements on the one hand side technical, but on the other hand side, uh, business requirements. And there is, for example, on the technical side, a huge data growth where flexible and scalable environments are really necessary. There's also the requirement for hybrid cloud. And so you need low latency interconnections and direct access to cloud providers. And to do AI and analytics, uh, yeah, there's a requirement for high power density and strong cooling. And on the business side, on the other side, um, it's really necessary to have um, yeah, business continuity in terms of 24 seven operations. And so to provide mission critical support, uh, it's really necessary to, to run these applications um, without loss of operation. And in terms of security, um, it's normally the case that service providers uh, need a registration and require IT compliance in terms of, for example, physical security to secure all uh, the ICT infrastructure in one secure place. And also um, regulations are very important in, in terms of governance, but also in terms of um, IT process certifications, like for example, ESO and so on. On the right hand side, I, I brought up some, some pictures of how we basically build data centers, how our data centers look like. So it's really massive, um, massive space and, and uh, tremendous capabilities in terms of um, yeah, operation and support. So really to give you more insight um, about the whole topic of smart cities, uh, I have brought up some, some partners where I'm really happy about. So first we have Sebastian Wolfsteiner, head of digital services at Inutu Grid, talking about connecting mobility, energy, and IT for smart cities. Then we have Klaus Dederichs, partner and head of ICT at Dres und Sommer, talking about from smart buildings to smart cities. And then finally, we also have Marco Skiel, uh, data center senior business development manager at NTT Limited, talking about bringing a global smart city uh, platform to Europe. And that's it from my side. I hope you enjoy the talks. If you have questions, please ask them inside the chat so I can bring them up to the speakers. And now I uh, hand over to the first speaker. Thank you, Dominic. Um, Sebastian Wolfsteiner here from uh, Inutu Grid. Uh, as Dominic introduced, I'm head of digital services, talking today about uh, connecting mobility, energy, and IT. Um, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so basically, um, for those who don't know Inutu Grid, um, we are a subsidiary company of Schneider Electric and uh, Deutsche Bahn Energy. Um, and we offer end-to-end -end solutions from consulting to project management and uh, digital development of digital services and operations, um, all in the fields of mobility and energy, as our two stakeholders obviously um, have this strong footprint in, the, in those industries, um, Schneider Electric having a vast um, the product range and experience in uh, electricity and energy um, business um, and, and DBI energy. Um, they have a lot of um, infrastructure know-how. And what we do is basically, we help utilities and uh, district and campus operators to really um, move from an analog world to a smart district. Um, and we do this for utilities all over Germany, all over the Dach region, um, as well as for districts, um, especially in the, uh, in the, in the northern um, part of Germany, um, Berlin, Hamburg, um, Saxonia, but uh, we're also moving into the south part. So basically all over the Dach region, we are, we are active. Um, what's it all about uh, today's talk? So, so um, it's, you all joined because of uh, the topic smart city. Question is, um, smart city is a very, very broad topic and it's always 
very, very interesting to hear different uh, opinions on what uh, smart cities is. And uh, from our perspective, we see that the smart city is consisting of basically six different smart layers. Um, basically, that's smart mobility, smart energy, it's smart living, um, consisting of uh, healthcare, uh, prevention, and uh, and care. Um, we see smart government, where we have uh, some initiatives um, on uh, on how to involve people digitally uh, into into in a city and then get their opinion. Um, smart environment and smart people, which uh, consists of um, learning and and how to ecologically keep the city uh, green. Uh, for today's talk and for for Intergrid, we we mainly focus on smart mobility and energy. And if we look at a smart city today, um, it's very, very complex. So talking about smart cities always have a lot of, lot of impl implications. So you're talking about buildings, you're talking about movable assets like a train, a car, a bus, um, you're talking about parking, you're talking about charging, uh, energy consumption on how to really um, help a city to, uh, to be able to function um, in itself. And we as Intergrid, we believe that um, we can reduce complexity in a smart city. So um, a smart city is too big to really focus on. Um, you, you don't get a really hands-on on how to start. And the smart building might be too small because it's simply one building. Um, and that's why we as Intergrid uh, see the, uh, the way to a smart city um, uh, through a smart district system. So that means you take out certain levels of, um, of districts, a certain aggregation of buildings, aggregate them into one district, and um, and make this district small in order to be able to uh, to really have a an intermediate step between a smart building and a smart city, and that's that's where we focus on, and that's uh, how we see uh, we can help our customers um, in a very very um, sophisticated and and knowledgeable way uh, by reducing complexity onto a smaller aggregation level. What do we see as trends in the smart district? So obviously coming from energy and mobility, we have uh, decarbonization as a lot, as, as, a, as a big trend, as a big driver. Uh, we have decentralization and we have digitization. And when you look at decarbonization and decentralization, those are things that have mainly to do with smart mobility and smart energy. Um, and they only work in a district. If you combine those two um, by digital solutions or by helping to really, um, feed them into one, one system that interacts with another. Taken for example, e-mobility. E-mobility is something where you build up charge points at different um, levels, either it's a wall box or a charge point in front of a building, but it only makes sense if you have a strong connection to the grid via a micro smart grid or, or uh, smart meters, because otherwise you won't be able to really um, have a smartness in terms of mobility. You simply have a car coming to a charge point and charging, but not being able to really steer that and, and help the, the customer or the grid to be stabilized. And if you look at digitization, um, digitization is mainly making those things smart. So you have smart energy, you have smart building um, to help to leverage those, um, those functions uh, and those trends in decommunization and decentralization. How do we get to a smart district? So we started at um, analog districts uh, years ago, and we believe that by, by connecting energy and mobility, it helps to, to create the digital district. Obviously, this is for us, it's, it's the foundation because we believe that when you look at um, how people move and how people uh, interact with the world, they basically have always the need on, on get from A to B. So that's basically a, a need for mobility. And they also have a need to somehow get some electricity to get lights, to get heat, heating into the building um, and to, to control those things, um, to control or to combine those two um, parts in the world, make from our perspective, the digital uh, di the district smart. Um, and we believe that um, coming from a smart city perspective and having this four other layers that we talked about, like smart living, smart uh, smart government, it will come as one's smart mobility and smart energy. So meaning the infrastructure is there and you can build upon. How do we see the different layers in the, in the digital, uh, district? So what we see from our customers is that they that we always start with the physical infrastructure. So that's the very, very baseline. And then you have a technology base of connected devices and IoT sensors. 
on top of that, you have smart application and computation power like edge computing and, and things that help to, uh, on a cloud level, to really aggregate data from sensors and devices. And on top of that comes adoption and usage. So that means apps and user platforms. This is something which is really important to us because we, we see that um, when people, when our customers talk about smart cities, it's quite quite hard because um, often they start from a from the from the very very uh, layer above from the adoption usage perspective, wanting to really start with a platform and, and apps and services, but it's 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 needed to have that basic or physical infrastructure in place and to make that um, somehow connected and smart in order to be able to really feed data and get insights from all those um, sensors. Um, to, to aggregate, analyze, and then translate into a user platform and actionable digital services that, um, that really help to make a, a, a district digital. So this is really important to, to understand that we are talking about different layers and depending on, on where districts and, and cities stand in terms of um, uh, technological and infrastructure um, equipment, it, it then depends on how they, how they can easily get smart or where to start in terms of smartness. A smart district to us is a, is a system of a system. So um, as I said, you have to start from a very, very asset level. Um, so that this is a lighting on, on the street and then you start with uh, equipment this um, asset with a certain smartness. So getting data out of that. And uh, by getting data out of that, it, it, a smart assets get connected. So it gets connected to a cloud system or a, a somehow digital system and all of a sudden once you start to connect and, and different assets you have a connected system so they start by lighting maybe and then you have parking infrastructure you have public transport you have health and all those things add up as a connected system infrastructure and then when you look at uh, on the very right hand side you have a what we call system of a system so this connected system infrastructure is part of a of a smart city smart district system so you have energy mobility with all those different sub layers of asset and, uh, and and system layers and this is also really important in order to form a a really comprehensive way of smart district and smart city um, development. You have to look at, at certain systems which you want to start where, uh, where where you want to start it and how to connect them and make them smart. So this is a very technical point of view, but it's very important to understand that depending on which type of system you want to you want to um, engage and you want to make smart, it's um, yeah you you have to think of which types of assets are included in the system and how, how to make those things smart. To give you an example, what we um, promote and uh, what is part one of part of our, our solution offers is an integrated mobility station. The the, the name of the talk I, uh, I present is uh, connecting mobility, energy, and IoT. And we believe that by having a, for example, an integrated mobility solution which includes bike sharing, car sharing, which includes a smart grid or a stationary um, battery uh, storage, um, also public transport. By, by combining this into a, in a one station, you can have a much higher um, efficiency in terms of connecting smart mobility and smart energy. Because taking, for example, that car sharing uh, vehicles have to charge somewhere, they will come at a certain time um, with a certain uh, demand for le electricity. And if you're able to really get them onto one point where they can charge as a whole, um, then it's much easier for for a district or for a city to balance out the power which is needed to charge them. So that's that's one example of uh, of how you can combine um, mobility and energy on an infrastructure level. Depending on how how big the size of um, or how how deep you want to integrate that um, mobility station into a district or a city, um, obviously it it depend like it uh, results in different sizing. So this might be a very large station right here, um, but you can also have that very small in, in in a in a lamp post, for example, to have a charging cable out of the lamp post which is connected to the grid and somehow balance that out. So this is a very um, very variable sizing um, and and helps to to combine those two layers of smart cities. What are the benefits? So we believe that by having those um, combination in a, in a station or even the, the general combination of smart mobility and energy, you can optimize operational costs. So you can optimize energy supply and consumption on the one hand because having 
uh, development in most European countries where, where we see much uh, the increase of uh, battery electric vehicles, you can easily optimize those energy supply and consumption of those vehicles by combining mobility and energy. You can have a traffic management and monitoring because once you have clear overview on on where the cars go and where they want to park and how they want to charge, you can much easier um, predict on on which uh, types of streets will be will be empty or will be will be packed by by traffic. And you can also foster new mobility and digital booking because once you have that station in place or digital hubs in place for mobility and energy, you can help citizens to really go there or book beforehand, like in a uh, public transport or a car sharing. And this is not something which is just a, a fancy slide. This is also something which we already have um, made real here on, on the Eurof campus in Berlin. So the Eurof campus in Berlin was uh, built five years ago. And um, what you see on those pictures are um, what we as Electric Grid built up here, which is a mobility hub. It's a base where you can charge your car, where you have autonomous driving, as a as a as a as a campus bus where you have PV as an energy supply and you can have car sharing cars that park there and 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 scooters who who can enhance the traffic and all the modal split there. So this is something where we built a on the order of campus a, let's say a smart district go to place to to have a look at it and see how things work. We built a micro smart grid here um, so you can see that life and on on stage um, and uh, if you're by any chance in berlin you can easily come by and i can give you a, a guided tour we have all things in place and uh, i'm happy to to uh, to steer you to this Oil campus that was it from my side um, thank you very much looking forward to your questions cool thanks a lot it was really interesting <laughs> um, we have uh, no questions in the chat, but I think you're around, right? So uh, if there are still mm -hmm. questions coming up, you can answer them directly, right? Sure. Thank you. All right. Cool. Then let's hand over. And we can see your screen. Perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Klaus Dieters. I'm the, the head of ICT and a partner for by Dresden Sommer. Um, Dresden Sommer is uh, the largest uh, project management consulting and engineering company in Germany with um, uh, uh, 43 location worldwide. And today I want to explain you what a smart building is or what a customized smart building is, because at the moment, many people um, are talking about smart buildings. And we said in a smart building, we are talking about technology and in a customized smart building. That is our vision. We are talking about technology, processes, new business models, and uh, artificial intelligence. And in, in my presentation, I want to explain to you what a customized smart building is and um, what are the benefits for the users, for the, benefit, for, for the developers, for the property companies, and for, for the corporates. And how is it possible to organize with a customized building also a smart city? Yeah, the, um, the, next, uh, the next slide, I hope it, it, it works, um, is digitization at the moment in the real estate um, branches. Uh, what does it mean? Yeah, everyone everyone's are talking about digitization, but we are talking about uh, artificial intelligence. We are talking about um, smart city, yeah, and we are talking about um, mobility. And uh, this is also together a digitization, yeah? But uh, what is the benefit for the developers and the property companies? That is the biggest question. And when we are talking to our customers, where we are talking about process optimization, building tr business transformation, making new business models uh, possible, next level energy optimization, reduction in operation cost, optimization of asset management, property management, facility management, War for talents, data collection and data vending. Yeah, there's no information about sensors or data or the IoT sensors. And we want to make uh, uh, the building better for the, for the customers. And um, there's a question, um, what can we learn from these projects? We designed the Cube Berlin, it's the smartest building in Europe. Uh, it, will be, it, is, it is finished uh, this year in, in February and um, it, is, it has integrated an in artificial intelligence with uh, 3,750 sensors, yeah, and at the moment CIA Imo is our client and is currently implementing six more digital projects internationally. 
versus Vietch in Amsterdam. Yeah, it's, it's older and everyone says that's the intelligent building of the world. But uh, in Amsterdam, in, in Vietch, there are 40,000 sensors integrated at many, many apps. Yeah? And that is the difference. Is it only the, 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 how many sensors is possible to integrate in a building or is it the intelligent? And uh, another project that we designed is the ship in Cologne. It's a project from Fond Off, a startup from Cologne. And at the moment we have to now to become a project developer in real estate because we see what can you do with an intelligent building. Or the Hammer Brooklyn Digital Campus um, project for Germany's largest project developers, Art Invest, which is uh, digitizing all its projects. Yeah, And we are the specialists to help them to, to digitize um, all this project at the moment. Or the Spring Park Valley, a project with a billion construction volume with 3,500 long-stay apartments, co-working spaces for research and development, conference areas, and much more. With AGVs and the underground to network the building of a project, uh, Quartier Heidestraße, that has also a billion um, building volume with 10,000 10, people with only 1,000 parking places. With services possibilities such as delivering services, bring and fetch services uh, for the gastronomy and the retail along um, with communication platform for the residents, yeah? And um, or the project like the Horsk Hanover from the company Continental or the Zeiss Lena pro project, yeah? This is about process optimization in the production and the logistics and also for the, for the thing war for talents, yeah? And our view, the tipping point is, is reached and uh, for intelligent project at the moment. And we are working on 7 billion euros only with intelligent buildings and smart buildings uh, and smart quarters and smart cities. Yeah? For this reason, <clears throat> we, we have to develop a customized smart building because we said uh, we, we have to think about customizing. Yeah? And with, uh, with an integrated mobility concept in the interest of a user and um, a brain that networks the technical systems that are networked with each other today, such a building automation system, access burglar alarm system, locker fire alarm system, lightning, etc. Yeah? That is very important to connect the things together. And with a brain that analyzes the usage and the behavior of a user and runs um, as um, at uh, the optimal operation point. Yeah, that is interesting for, for our clients. No? And the biggest question is how to do to implement the digital transformation in your project and how is it possible to get from a manual building that was 1980 via the const, uh, con customized smart building in 2080 to the self-thinking building in 2025. Yeah? And what is the strategy approach? We have to put <clears throat> the user in the center and not the, 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 thing, the things or the sensors and the technique. And we start with a requirement management phase with matter of expertise such as design thinking and system consulting. And um, you have to look at the individual stakeholders. Each one has different needs. And it's different when, are talking, when, are, when we are talking about uh, the generation Y versus the baby boomers, yeah? Or the startups, um, the expectations are different. Yeah, and the, the guests um, or um, also the, the catering or the, the facility management, um, that is very important to understand, yeah, what are their needs? And uh, we have different needs. And um, the other question is, who are the stakeholders in the, the building or in the quarter? Yeah? And the factor is uh, which stakeholders are in the building? What are their needs and their problems today? And what are their wishes, service providers, tenants, and users? Yeah? And if you analyze the stakeholders today, you look at the employee's daily routine via customer journey. Yeah, this looks different for N as an employee, for, um, uh, for, for Johannes, yeah, um, Johannes, he is, uh, the, he is a part of the facility management teams. He needs different data, he needs uh, different things. And the needs are matched uh, with about 140 digitization uh, modules uh, that we have created in the last months with our clients. And the color blocks are important and the gray are un unimportant. That is important to understand. Yeah, and via personas and stakeholders, we are able to compare the different needs of the stakeholders with about 140 digitization modules. Yeah, and um, by the mean um, of a digitization matrix targets definition, 
um, we are able to analyze the indi uh, individual subject areas and develop a selection of different digitization modules. Customize is, is, in, the few, uh, is, is in the focus. And for green wire, they are very, very interesting. For the, this building, the other one are not interesting. And uh, for us, it's very important to create the building new. IoT and digital readiness are in the foreground of our conception of an intelligent real estate building so that we can um, also integrate new IoT sensors technologies in our properties in the future because we don't know what happens in the next months in the next years. Uh, we have to talk about um, the, the designing and we have to take the human being as a model for the development and the intelligent building since we uh, as a human are equipped with brain, sensor organs, eyes, taste, touch, and the sensor organs um, are networks via nerve fibers. That's why we are intelligent and our buildings of today do not have this because um, this does not exist yet. And um, open APIs interfaces are the first choice in, in, in our vision. Yeah? And the building brain networks, user data with devices and external systems are connected together. Yeah? And with a building uh, app, we can organize all the systems from access control to booking system, everything that is needed um, in a building that is important. And um, to make all this possible, our buildings must be 5G ready or Wi-Fi ready. Everywhere, uh, connectivity is in the focus of our buildings. And we have, to, we have a large number of different radio networks in the building. So we need a radio frequency register for the building. Because at the moment we are talking about LoRaWAN, LemonBeat, UUID, ZigBee, Z-Wave. These are all new in, um, IoT interfaces among this, which uh, ones are secure. Yeah, that is the question. And to make the building secure, we need a cybersecurity concept with penetration test of all the buildings. And the customized smart building can be implemented not only for new buildings, but also for existing buildings. A digital ready check that we create in the last months provides a detailed overview of the status of the planning and the existing properties. And um, if you look at a customized smart building, I think it's a little bit like a Formula One racing car. Yeah, you can only win a racing car if you, you have the right driver and provide pit crew. And uh, we are working together with eShelter um, and eShelter is a pro 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 the, uh, the provider for the operation and intelligent buildings such as the Cube Berlin or our own buildings from days and summer uh, for the first and the second level support for hardware, software updates, cybersecurity. This is IoT managed services and this is not in the focus of the facility management of the property management today and also in the future. Yeah, and uh, how is it possible to, to create this, uh, this pit crew? Yeah, that is important. And for, for us is also a very important thing, how is the way to the zero carbon building in the future? Yeah, and when we are talking about uh, data, yeah, it's also to, integ to integrate the data analytics and the customized smart building generates a lot of data. But a lot of data don't, um, uh, a lot of data only help if you have data analytics. Never change a running system that, that, is, that is yesterday or that was yesterday. And um, the question is, how do we increase efficiency in the operation of a building? Buildings are designed for the worst cases. On the left side, you see the worst cases, yeah? And um, it's, it's, it's different. And uh, in, a, in a dynamic view, however, the capacity utilization over the weeks is not the same. That's the right, the, the right um, thing that you can see. And when we view it dynamically in a building, um, it may only consume as much energy as it is necessary for the number of the people in the building. Yeah, that is important. And COVID-19 shows the current problem at the moment because we, we are at, at home, yeah, we are in the home office and our building don't know that. Yeah, and we, we, the building need, and it needs only cooling and heating and air. Yeah, it's unbelievable, but that's the normal way at the moment. And in combination with the right technology, the building can directly influence its use. Yeah, air volume is reduced, cooling and heating are adjusted according to demand. And for us, it's very important. Um, this means uh, also that uh, um, if the occupancy rate um, of 70% is verified by the booking system, floors that are not required can no longer be booked on the day. So we can reduce the energy for the floors. And in a connection with a brain and in connection with a technical concept, 
uh, in the cube, we integrate an energy switch buffer, a dynamic energy management system is created. And um, on the roof of, of a building, there is no technical inside or beside a solar collector. Yeah, this creates a future usable area on the building and that is the smart city in the future. And uh, for us, it's very important also to understand high performance building and develop predictive operations. We have to connect the weather forecast together um, and the building becomes a self-thinking building using all the data and the data from the artificial intelligence. Yeah, and I hope uh, this is very, very interesting because at the moment, we have several new planning requirements in a customized smart building. The architect and the BSL planner won't be able to effort that because their, their focus is not data, their focus is not digitization. Yeah, and in order to be able to, to test all the things yeah, and um, to test it, um, we, um, we, uh, we uh, for, for technical application and the advanced, we have set up a test and demonstration center in our building at the University RETH where we, where we can connect um, and network together and we can test the connectivity of the products and uh, the software and also the, with a penetration test we can test are they safe or not. Yeah, and for this it's very important to understand um, we build up um, the, 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 new, the new building at the moment, the smart commercial building center is the headquarter of Dresden Sommer in Aachen and today we are developing a new building uh, which will be designed as a living lab. So we can test all the things together and we have a test area for IoT and cybersecurity. I think that is uh, the only way to, to think the right, the right things at the moment in the market. And we said customized smart building by the recent summer, this is the right way to intelligent buildings in the future. Yeah. And um, this is my, my presentation. I hope uh, you understand what I, what I want to, to, to talk to you. Yeah, thank you. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, really great insights into this whole topic. Uh, there are also some questions that came up in the in the chat. Um, I will bring up some uh, of the most interesting ones. So uh, first, Christoph Thiemann asks, where are the low hanging apples and which are the biggest challenges? Yeah, the, the low hanging fruits or the low hanging apples um, are in the first phase to discuss um, what can you do with the, with the data? Yeah, that's very important. Many, many um, clients from us has no digitization strategy. That is the biggest problem. And um, you have to, to analyze um, your, your own, your own um, system. Yeah? When you are a project, developers, a project um, developer, it's different like, uh, like a property companies. Yeah? The property companies um, are thinking about to reduce the cost by asset management, facility management, and project management. And uh, there is a, an example, yeah, the, one of our clients is a DECA, and the DECA has 650 um, buildings worldwide. Yeah, and the, the, the rent they, they, uh, they, they get uh, in the year per year is about 2.5 billion euros. Yeah, and the cost for asset management, property management, facility management is about 10%. So when I can, reduce the cost to only by 1%. It's unbelievable what we can do at the moment. And another, th another thing is I think it's very important to understand to create new business models. Yeah, at the moment, many, many project developers and property companies are thinking only about rent and to sell square meters. Yeah, new to create new business models. That is the benefit for the users. And uh, that is, that is, a, um, that is to, to think like Uber and Airbnb. They have nothing, but they have data and they make many, many money with it. And that is the focus for, for our clients to do this. Cool. All right. Yeah. So your answer is probably already connected to the next question. And that is, what are the main benefits of smart buildings? Does it pay off to install and manage all these sensors? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the benefits is, um, is in the first, the first phase to reduce technique. Yeah, when I, I don't need um, um, everything in the building. So you can, be, you can reduce um, things that is very important to understand, but the cost for the smart building is about two to 5% more than a normal building. So when you have to, to, to think about it, uh, how is it possible to, to, to reduce the cost? Yeah, in the first phase, but it is not possible. So you have to think about new business models to reduce your operation. Yeah, that's very important. You can make many, many, many money with it to optimize this. 
and also you have to think um, about new business models and um, like uh, bring and fetch services um, for the gastronomy for the retail and um, to connect this yeah and um, COVID-19 is the best uh, the, the best thing at the moment we it's normal for us to to talk about um, bring and fetch service yeah but there is no one who can can organize this and um, in our um, um, buildings and, and our smart cities uh, like the Kati Heidestraße we integrate this two years before COVID-19 yeah and now we have all the, 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 the things what we can do with the data and uh, you can make money with it that is very important to understand yeah. cool. one last question uh, regarding the sustainability that came up um, so do you think it's efficient to and and uh, sustainable to drive these smart building initiatives uh, because in the other regard there is also the requirement for energy consumption the data centers and coolers and so on yeah yes i think it, it's it's clear when we are talking about covid 19 yeah i, I explain i want to explain it uh, a few minutes before because we are um, many many people are at the, in a home office yeah but the building don't know that yeah, we need the cooling, we need the heating, we, we need all the things, but not only by COVID-19. Yeah, we have, uh, we have a different view. Um, um, the the BS, BSE planner or the, the, the planners are thinking about times. Yeah, the building starts at 7 and it ends and at 7, 7 p.m. But that, that is not the normal way. And we are talking about 100% of the people are in the building. That's different from Monday to Friday. And so we can reduce cost if, if we cut off the energy. That is the best um, important thing to reduce cost. And um, when you integrate the right light, lighting system, yeah, you can also reduce cost because when there's not, no one in the room, yeah, you can cut off the, 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 the energy. And to bring this together, that is very important. But uh, there is no one at the moment in the market who has the knowledge because we have no data. Yeah, we create nice buildings, yeah, but we have no data. And for us, it's very important to bring the data like the Cube Berlin, yeah, we, we, we take the data and we want to analyze the data. And for our client, the, 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 the customer and uh, the, the client from us, the CIMO, uh, for him, it's very important to see what can you do with the data. And is, is it the same thing when, I, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm talking about new buildings? Yeah, I can take the data from the old one and I can create better buildings in the future. Yeah, to re to to reduce the the cost for for the for the cooling system. Yeah, and often we see there are uh, three, 30 30 percent more energy installed that that uh, that uh, that I need, so we can reduce it. And for I think that is very important to understand. Uh, but you need in the first phase the data, and you have to analyze it. And when you have it, you can optimize all your processes, and you can optimize your building um, uh, designing in the future. Perfect. Cool. Thanks a lot. Uh, that is really interesting. So you can also see uh, in the chat, there are more questions coming up. Um, so no problem. Really very interesting uh, topic. Definitely. I hope you have the chance to answer them directly in the chat, probably. Yeah. And then yeah. I, I would say let's uh, hand over to to Markus. Yeah, thank you. So uh, welcome also from my side. Just trying to switch the monitor. So hopefully you can see my screen now. Uh, also a uh, very warm welcome from my side. Uh, I'm Markus Giel working for Entity Limited. Uh, I'm doing uh, business development for a part of our portfolio, which is called Intelligent Business. And we have recently heard from, from my predecessors uh, those smart approaches, they are all about business. They take care about sustainability, they take care about the customer experience, but that's all business related stuff. So technology has to come in at some point in time, but we are definitely on a, on a different level. Um, so let me just introduce uh, my company very briefly. I think uh, Dominic has done uh, his part in, in the introduction as well. Uh, Entity is not a household name in Germany, I would say, uh, but it's a rather large uh, enterprise on a global scale. So just to give you some figures, I do not want to go through everything. There is one interesting part besides the size is uh, 
we have a lot of interesting customers. So 85% of global Fortune 500 companies are our customers, and we are really heavily investing in, in R&D, which means for a Japanese-based company that we are doing real R&D with a time horizon of 10 to 30 years. So we are really trying to look into the future. We are really investing a lot of money in doing things that are just good ideas. Uh, just an example, we are already working heavily on, on networks of the next generation. Our history is network, as you can uh, see, it's uh, the Nippon Telegraph and Telephone Company, 120 years old, but we are still looking far into the future. We are doing not only 5G, we are doing 6G developments right now and uh, things like that. And, and that's the most important one for, for this session. Uh, we have been awarded by the United Nations. You might know these United Nations goals for sustainability. And the goal number 11 is about sustainable cities and communities. And NTT has been awarded to become the business avenger for this. So we are really putting a high focus on, on this area of, of smart cities. Just to give you another example, there is a cooperation uh, between Toyota, the car manufacturer, and NTT just recently announced two or three months ago uh, with a joint uh, mutual investment of 1.8 billion US dollars. So we are taking smart cities really serious. Um, and with regard to what the topic of today is, it's about where are my data, uh, where is the cloud, what is necessary to, to bring up something uh, that goes in the direction of smart in cities, smart buildings, smart uh, districts. I will just show you our architecture and just explain a little bit with the help of this architectural view uh, what we do in, in real life. Um, one of the most prominent examples uh, is uh, our customer Las Vegas, uh, rather cool city some 600,000 uh, people living there, some more than, than 40 million per year of tourists. Uh, uh, so it's a very specific <laughs> city. It's not the, the normal city you would expect, but it's a very innovative uh, city mayor. And we are doing this for several years now. And what you can see on this picture is the basic architecture where we put in a lot of uh, thinking in where data have to be with respect to different dimensions. First of all, to generate business out of these smart approaches is you need to know where is the value of your data. Value of data is, is really a variant uh, that varies over time and that varies over places. Just think about the traffic light. If you have to cross uh, a road and you wait for, for the green traffic light, then it's very clear the, the traffic light, the value of the traffic light is at this very moment. It's, it's a real time value and it is located where you are because two blocks down the road, uh, it's not interesting for you at that moment because you're just at this crossing and wait for the green traffic light. And if you have passed the crossing, then the value is gone because you are already heading your way down to hopefully a nice weekend uh, and you don't care about the traffic light any longer. And so you really have to think about where is uh, the value coming from the data. There is another aspect, the value of data varies over time, not only because there is a strong impact on real time, but there's also an impact on long-term data. We all have learned also from, from the two previous sessions, you have to do analytics. You have to learn from your data. You have to draw your conclusions. You have to build up your prediction models and therefore you need historic data, not each and every data. You need the right data, hopefully some, some metadata, some structured ones, some already reduced ones. But the learning phase, that's something that gives you also the opportunity to do clever things like steering your building in a better way, uh, helping out people in your city, doing things like that. So value of data over time is really of the essence to create also a good data architecture. Security is definitely something you have to look at very carefully, especially in cities. You are very quickly in a situation where you say, hey, uh, this is in German, it would say critis, critical infrastructure. 
yeah if it's about water if it's about electricity it's about all these these things um, public transport high value of, of security and if you think about how can i monetize these data it's really essential to know who owns the data because these stakeholders would be able to earn perhaps some money with it and then you have perhaps some technical restrictions and at the end we can come up with something which makes up our actual smart city platform which we have created you have going from left to right you have the the iot sensors uh, in the front cameras everything like this they have to be connected to some compute capabilities what we call the micro data micro data centers so at the edge very close to where the data are generated due to this real time uh, value of the data you need some kind of uh, compute power close by uh, then you you hand over the data to some some bigger infrastructures for compute storage and things like that um, to do your analytics that's the green box in the middle and these two boxes contain the user data they are containing the data of, of the city or the one who owns the data entity is not interested in these data it's customer data and they have to stay where they are they have to follow all the rules gdpr and so on what entity brings into that game is this blue box at, at the lower end at the lower right end we are doing the orchestration because this is in any case if you're doing real world problems you end up with a rather complex technology set up anyway how you want to do it and you need to orchestrate this and this is something which is has to be done also in a very clever way because otherwise you are ruining the business case you cannot do these real world use cases if you don't if you are not able to automate and to to do a, a clever strategy in managing all this infrastructure otherwise the cost will be too high so then we have this threefold architecture edge core and we have things in the cloud our orchestrator is definitely in the cloud just to give you an, an, an example on, on, on this uh, we have oh, that's interesting we have uh, measured people on the move uh, this is one of the classic use cases it's interesting in las vegas to see how people are walking in the streets or in a in a shopping mall or in a casino or in any places uh, it has security aspects yes you want to be you want to watch people if they are doing crazy things uh, you otherwise just want to count people you have here a retail situation you want to be able to tell how many people are going into the shop, shop or are leaving the shop and you want to get better control and out of this data there is an immediate benefit that you can now react on some critical situation yes but the real power of the data sits within the analytics uh, and this is now uh, the analytics part of it we are able to predict over time how many people will be in this place if you are observing people in in certain places there is a pattern you can add other data sources like weather or whatever and then you see the red and the blue colored curves and it shows pretty good uh, predictive quality and that's where the money is if you are able to predict those crowds of people then you can help out your local retail uh, shops and say hey please add some staff there is a lot of people you can sell to or please do some promotion you can get more people into your shop there it starts to get interesting because someone has to carry the invest of these uh, smart things and if you are better in predicting things you typically are better in earning money that's the short version of what we do at ntt with our platform it will be available in germany as well uh, and if you want to get some some further insights just two days from now or here in in the right lower corner our ceo from ntt limited uh, will give a talk on linkedin uh, to continue this discussion and hopefully we can stay in contact we can touch base and we are ready here to help you out with 
anything you are interested in building up your own smart city or smart district or smart building. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Markus. Uh, that was a great insight into that uh, topic. So uh, looking into the chat, there were no uh, yeah, new questions coming up. So I think you explained everything <laughs> quite, quite well. Um, but uh, what we can do is definitely that we will uh, send around uh, yeah, the materials and also the recording to everyone who attended today's uh, yeah, webcast. And uh, in that regard, I thank everyone who attended uh, today and a special thanks also to all the speakers. And so, yeah, thank you everyone. Have a great afternoon.